So I just got started in this job like two weeks ago and was asked to tell you about games education and research. So first some personal background. Uh, I have both like academic and industry background. I studied both at the School of Science and Arts and then I've been in the business like from 98 and full time from 2006 as the research and development director of virtual age.com. Okay, and now I'm continuing there as an advisor. Uh, started doing uh, singing games some years before uh, SingStar. I was originally a sound designer, designer and engineer. Then moved on to webcams and computer vision technology. This was my MA thesis work. Uh, game where you control the dragon, it flies when you wave your hands, and it breathes fire when you shout. And then some bigger scale uh, kung fu installations. This is like media art or or festival activity that we rented out. Then at Virtual Air Guitar Company we developed our own webcam body tracker and first we worked on a virtual air guitar game, basically a dancing game with air guitar choreography, which was eventually cancelled, but then we managed to get out two games, Apple Live for PS3 uh, 2010 and last year Apple High in the sequel. Okay, and uh, I'm just one of the many auto graduates in games industry. I guess pretty much all of the companies have had some engineer at least from auto. So traditionally we've been educating engineers, artists, management, and we have pretty good resources for our students, like all the relevant software with computers, then nowadays we have two motion capture studios, one kind of uh, quick and low end and really high end at Google. And uh, also for those who want to start their own companies, we have venture bars and summer startups and so on. Like you probably know. And what's new is this MA in game design and production program. It just started two years ago and the first students uh, will graduate this year. And uh, uh, last week we selected five new students. Um, I'm really blown away by the talent they have already when entering the school. And also at the, at the at School of Science, we select five more students with a more technical background, although we still prefer people who also have artistic skills. And they will do a special study module with the MS students, some study projects and game analysis. Uh, and um, again, design courses. Mm, okay, so we have a variety of courses and of course study projects because what really matters in the industry is your portfolio. And we encourage people to push the boundaries, take risks in student projects because then you only lose your time if you pay enough <coughs> company money. And that's why I really like to be back at the university. And also, personally, I, I think I can take more risks now. Let's see. Uh, so, if I had to summarize the kind of people that we want to produce, it's people who get things done. And uh, what helps in that is kind of T-shaped skill profile. It's a term uh, I think originating from IDEO uh, CEO back in uh, yes, something. I don't remember really, but it means that you have really strong expertise in one area or at least one area and also a wide basis of other skills <coughs> that helps you in collaboration and uh, pitching your ideas and uh, prototyping and so on. So I'll break it down a bit, like the first, first part of course of getting things done is coming up with an idea which is often based on your own <coughs> expertise like gameplay design, audiovisual, or technology. The, the, my strongest talent is in technology, and I've been kind of playing that gameplay innovation through technology card over and over again. And these examples here are kind of the <coughs> development or evolution of physics engine-based games, like 
gradient physics, angry birds, cut the rope, less one water. It's all, all the time becoming more complicated, and it's, nowadays it's more difficult to find a, find new game ideas based on that technology. So you have to be looking at new emerging technologies. Mm. Okay, and the next part, the kind of really difficult part is usually getting some resources, resources to do uh, to start working because uh, if you can't get the game done all by yourself, you have to recruit some people. Usually, you have to pitch at least inside a company, which is surprisingly hard because your boss is stressed out and it's just can't concentrate on any detail unless you hit him on the head with a prototype that really works. Okay, it's nice. And uh, what I've learned personally is that usually it's not the best idea that wins when pitching, it's, it's the one with most polish. In, in the presentation, which is unfortunate, but to, especially in trade shows where publishers have, have like 30 minutes slots, full days booked, and uh, everyone wants to stand out and interest them. So you need your game design skills and then visual presentation, prototyping, creating, writing, character design, all that stuff. And then with, when you get to pre-production or production, I think <coughs> the key is that people who can work on different areas, can get things done without interrupting the flow of others, like game designers, they can make prototypes can themselves program something and also make three test assets and so on. It's just more efficient and fast. So we want, want to teach programming to pre pretty much everyone, at least some elementary level, and also like 3D modeling skills to all programmers and so on. And also, there's a lot of other stuff. Uh, yeah, one, one thing, creating your own tools is a great way of coming up with a fresh aesthetic. So, what, what I'd like to be able to do is to teach artists to create their own tools. And that's also a kind of research subject that is pretty hot in many universities. I think. Okay. So about research, how many minutes do I have? Okay, <laughs> well, that's like, a, but that summarizes it. There's two main topics, gameplay innovation through technical innovation, and then novel creativity tools. So that for example, designers and programmers can create animations themselves. <coughs> because often when the prototyping action games, you need animations right now, okay, you figure out that the character needs to have some new ability which needs animation and then it's really slow to get some animated to do it for you. Okay. And also anything else. We have three four suggestions and I try to help you get funding. And there's also related research. Okay. That's pretty much it.